Hello, this is Political Forum for Wednesday, September 25th, 2013. I am your host, Dartesia Pitts. I am a board member of CAN TV. We welcome today as our guest, Alderman Ariel Roboris of the 30th Ward. Thank you, Alderman, for joining us. Thank you for having me. Um, I've had the opportunity to uh, interview the Alderman previously, and I think we had a great time, so um, I look forward to this interview today. If you are watching us now, this is a live interactive show. You, can, you have the opportunity to call in and ask the Alderman questions, compliment him for the great job that he's doing, or any type of engagement over the, te um, the telephone and on your TV screen. You can also tune in to us at www.cantv.org backslash live. We live stream all our shows now. Well, first again, thank you for coming, Alderman. And um, I'm going to just start right off and ask you, how long have you been an Alderman of the 30th Ward? been an Alderman now for 10 years, a little over 10 years in the 30th Ward. Okay. And I always like to ask this question just so the... Um, the viewers can get a feel for who you are. What did you do before you became an alderman? Well, if I go back about 36 years, I was a school teacher for a while, two, three years. I then uh, uh, began working for the city of Chicago. I drove, uh, I was a truck driver for the city of Chicago for numerous years. Uh, a member of local 726, uh, now it's the Teamsters Union. Um, I then worked for the Department of Water for about 10 years. Uh, I was also a dispatcher with the City of Chicago, so I worked during the snow programs, during the emergency seasons. Um, at the Department of Water, I used to spec the, I used to design the vehicles. I was purchasing vehicles for the department. Uh, I later went to the Department of General Services, and I was a deputy commissioner. That was probably on my 24th year of service prior to me coming to be an alderman. So I was a deputy commissioner when I left in the city of Chicago, Department of General Services. Okay. So you, again, you have a history, long history um, of service. So this was a natural progression for Correct. you. 34 years, 34 yeah. years of the city of Chicago, uh, totally. Oh, wow. Yeah. And can you tell the viewers where exactly is the 30th Ward? The 30th Ward is located on the northwest side our boundaries go on the east end at uh, Central Park, about 3,500 west, and we go as far west as 6,400 west, which is Narragansett. Um, parts of the ward, we go as far east as Diversity on the 2,800 on the, south, on the east end, and we go uh, as far east uh, south as Fullerton. Okay. And we also go as far north as uh, Grace Street. Okay, so this is the current um, ward. That is that is on the, the that is actually the old map. Oh, so the boundary you the boundaries you were just telling us are for the new are ward. for the new ward. Gotcha. The, these were the new the old boundaries went down to Pulaski and uh, Grand Avenue, uh, and, and this is the new ward. If you go on the east end of that ward, it looks like a hammer there. It's a diversity mm -hmm. uh, on the south on the south end. This end. That's Milwaukee Avenue. Okay. That's diversity on the other side there. Okay. Central Park to the right. Gotcha. That is Narragansett, 6400 okay. West. Okay. So we use we use parks as guidelines. That's Reese Park there on the west end. Okay. In the center we have Kilbourne Park. Yep. And then towards the your right, mm -hmm. uh, all the way to the east end would be Kosciuszko Park. Am I right? Across the street. Okay, got it. It's not there because it's not in my ward, but that, that's, that, that's oh, what we right use here. as uh, gotcha. correct. Gotcha. Correct. Okay. So you have a pretty big ward, Alderman. Do you um have any ward nights? Do you guys have ward nights? We down do. Uh, for those of us that, those of you, especially, I, I want to welcome uh, new viewers uh, to to Can TV. Uh, in particular, those that are in my new ward. Um, our ward nights are every Monday night from 5 to 7 p.m. Uh, we, we, we stay there till the last person leaves, um, uh, till, sometimes till 9 o'clock, 9.30, we're there at the office. That happens every Monday night. 
except on, on the holidays. The office is closed. So don't come down there on Labor Day. <laughs> that's, that's correct. <laughs> that's correct. Gotcha. So what kind of questions are you answering? Are, are, are people coming down to the ward, um, the ward office, the ward night, to talk about, you know, the garbage can? Some of them are alleys. issues with, you know, recycling has been something that we've been doing now. Uh, they rolled out uh, our phase about four months ago, uh, and in some instances, some of the areas are not picked up. Okay. So what we do is we call in, mm -hmm. and and uh, let our our our, uh, our our pickup team uh, notify them. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's uh, it's waste management. Uh, either, but the most of the problems is that the carts are inside their properties. Mm -hmm. The they will not go into people's properties. Okay. So we ask them to make sure that on the week of pickup to roll out the carts. Keep the carts keep the carts in the alley uh, for pickup. Uh, for those that have curbside pickup garbage, they pick them up on the same day. So you roll out both carts to the street, on the street side. Uh, those that p get picked up garbage on the alley side, there are, there are weeks designed, designated for pickup. And it, so it doesn't necessarily happen on the same day they pick up your garbage. But the recycling uh, has proved to be uh, a wonderful uh, 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 task. I mean, I'm, 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 I'm glad the, the mayor rolled this out. Okay. When you recycle properly, you fill your garbage cart maybe one third, oh, maybe wow. one third. Wow. You will not fill if you recycle properly. You will you you won't fill your cart. You will not fill your cart. Wow. Um, well, if and, and I don't want to interrupt mm -hmm. you, but I just want to let the callers know. I want them to engage and call us and let mm -hmm. us know. Come talk to the alderman. Call us at the number that you see at the bottom of your screen, which is three one two seven three eight one zero eight zero. And I do believe we have a caller. Oh, yeah, um, I, I know with the housing crash, there's a lot of problems with the uh, vacant houses in the city. And I wonder if is that really an issue in your ward? Oh yes. And and if so, like, I don't oh, know, yes. what can we do about it if we see any vacant houses that seem like they're problems, or what is the city kind of doing to? That's a very good question. Care? Thank you for asking that. Uh, when you see a vacant home, you'll notice a vacant home when you see a trash, uh, lawn is not being cut. Um, signage on the door front which means that your water has been cut off call the ward call the, the call my office immediately call the alderman's office immediately um, we then look into the system to find out who owns the building it could be it could be going through, through we, it's, a, it's a matter of searching records and deciding who owns it and and and, and that's that's one way that you can help us we 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 the alderman we're not we're not into real estate but in the last three years, we are keeping logs of 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 homes that are that are uh, foreclosed in our in our in our areas. Uh, it it's not a good sight, uh, but but we need we need help from from folks like you. Uh, please call it in. Let us know that 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 is it is a foreclosure, and we'll 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 send someone out immediately the same day. We take pictures and we follow up from that point. But it is important. It is imp urgently important that you notify us when that happens, the minute you hear about it. Okay. And Alderman, before we got um, our phone call, we were talking about recycling, and you, you indicated that, you know, you are a proponent of recycling and that if we recycle properly, we save that a lot so of... That is so correct. We, we save a lot of space in the, the can. So um, what are the projections of it saving us money? It's a good question. Um, Although the dollar amounts are not out there today, right now, uh, the city of Chicago is going to roll out the last phase uh, in October, uh, probably a week from today. Uh, the, uh, I think it's on the northwest side. They still don't have carts in some areas. And that will be the last phase of the rollout process where they deliver the carts. It is projected that if we recycle properly, we will save the city 50% of what it would cost us to do the recycling. It would have cost the city to do the recycling by using a private vendor. 50% uh, is a lot. That's a lot and so what we do is we use our resources where we need them. Uh, uh, snow removal, emergency situations. We're doing, we're doing more with less today. And, and that's what I, I, we tell our constituents. Mm -hmm. 
Um, in addition, the alderman has, is, is tasked with doing more with less. Uh, but uh, but the re recycling is one of the things that I talked to the mayor when he when he was elected. The mayor was calling the aldermen, the incumbents, in one at a time to ask, what is it that you want to see uh, in the very near future? What, what would you like to do? What would you like to see change? And I told him recycling, and there it is. Uh, and he said he's going to do it, and he did it. And uh, not only is it um, saving us money, it's good for the environment. It's very good for the environment. If you recycle properly, we're not handling it. We don't have to pay a disposal fee anymore like we used to. Uh, that saves the city a lot of money. Uh, the private vendors are taking it, but you will not fill your cart with garbage. The majority of the garbage that we were putting in carts was recycling materials. And and uh, to this date, I don't. We don't fill in my home. We do not fill the garbage cart to the max. Okay. It it sure does save a lot of money. And recyclable materials: paper, glass. Uh, paper, glass, cardboard, okay. uh, plastic, uh, metal. Okay. Do not put foam in there. Any any foam, cups, anything like that. That's not a recyclable product. Okay. But uh, but but when the last phase that goes out. I think it's going to go out another week or so. Uh, please read your, 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 the brochure that they send you. Read it. It's very important. They do not pick it up on the same day uh, uh, as your garbage. There's a week a schedule. Um, my schedule, uh, where we're at, we're on the what, what we call the, the, uh, the yellow schedule. It's, mm -hmm. it's every other week mm -hmm. that it gets picked up. Uh, but it, it is the right way to do it. I mean, the kids are learning uh, mm -hmm. from it as well. Uh, and if ki if the kids can do it, the kids are showing us what, what we should be doing as adults. Saving I think, money? I think that's very, very important. Yeah. Saving money. Yeah, Correct. saving money, good for the env environment. Um, Alderman, from looking at the streets and sanitation's top ten requests, graffiti mm -hmm. is the most called in for services. It is. Why it is. is it taking so long to remove? Well, we've got less crews out in the street, and we also, uh, the, the, we did the, the approach of the uh, grid, grid uh, program as well as garbage. It's clean on a grid system. On the average, our graffiti team comes into my ward every two weeks. It is there, uh, is there every, like every 10 days. Unless we have a special where we, it's an emergency and we, we need to call the graffiti team out like I did today. But mm -hmm. I'll explain that in a little while because we got a caller. We got a caller. Hi, caller. Hi, yeah. caller. Hi, hi. Thanks for taking my call. I really appreciate all of the input that you're coming up with about recycling and graffiti. Those are really, really basic, important uh, issues around the city. Uh, another um, issue that uh, I wanted to bring up, uh, I'm Carol Harold, and I'm a member of the uh, Committee for Media Access. And a month or so ago, um, my name was among many names uh, on our letter that we sent to each of the aldermen, thanking them for their support when RCN was renewing their contract. And now Comcast is going to be coming up for their franchise renewal in we're concerned that they will come up with a contract as good as or better than the RCN contract. And we want CAN TV, you know, wonderful programs like this, to continue to be supported and to be independent, to be well funded. And we wonder when that comes up before the city council um, uh, what your reaction will be uh, at, at that point. And, and thank you for listening to my call. I want to support it. We need these programs. If it wasn't for these programs, I wouldn't be here today. I, I, I wouldn't listen to you. So we need to support CAN TV and these, these, these programs uh, for viewers, for the average person. I mean, it's very, very important. So I am a proponent. So you got my, my uh, support on that. Good deal. And before, um, we have. A, it looks like the lines are on fire over there. <laughs> But um, before any more callers come through, just wanted to continue the conversation about graffiti and the removal process. The, the, yeah, the um, graffiti is done today, as I said earlier, on a grid system. They'll come in there, they'll come in with three or four different crews, and they'll get rid of the problem uh, in, in, in two days. Mm -hmm. So they're there attacking the problems, and they do it very efficient. 
Uh, true, they don't do it like we used to get a graffiti removed at one time uh, in 24 hours. That went to that went to uh, two days. Now they went to three days. But um, we have fewer resources, and we have to understand that we're doing a little more with less. It's taking a little more time. But uh, once they come in, they come in on the average about every 10 days to every ward in the city of Chicago. Uh, and we welcome that. Um, there's, there's locations that they hit daily. There's, the minute you take it down, it's back up, unfortunately. Uh, one of the things with graffiti is that it cuts down in the winter, in the wintertime. Come March, it escalates. It is the highest point of the season for graffiti. It's almost like the warm weather comes out, right? So the kids are out there and they get their painting utensils and they're out to work. Um, and not all graffiti is gang graffiti. There's a lot of artists out there. A lot of, unfortunately, they're doing it in the wrong place. But, uh, but the numbers are very high around March and they start to dip down as the summer uh, continues. Uh, it's because it's, 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 it gets warmer, obviously, between the months of January and, and February and March, and then April, you'll, you'll see it peak. Uh, then it drops off again. School is out. Wow. Well, we have another caller. Hi, caller. Hi, um, thank you very much for taking my call. Um, I wanted to speak with the alderman regarding an article I read recently about Chicago receiving the rather dubious distinction of murder capital no. of the United States in 2012. And I was just curious to know what sort of you know accountability you think government plays, because obviously you know the politicians are not the people committing the crimes. But sort of what accountability do you think the government has to sort of squelch this? And if you foresee the city sort of turning the corner to a more uh, peaceful, nonviolent society anytime soon. Well, thank you, th th thank you for, the, for that question. That's a tough one. Uh, I, I wish I had the, uh, the superintendent alongside of me. <laughs> but but the numbers do indicate that, uh, that the homicides are down in the city of Chicago. Um, it's, it's to, be, to be named the capital, the homicide capital of the world is not, is not a good title. That's not what Chicago is. Um, we got some more police officers. We true, we could use some more police officers. There's no doubt about it. Is there is there a, a reason to to call the national guards at this point? Absolutely not. That's why we train police officers. Um, the, the numbers do indicate that that, that we're we're the, the crime is going down. Uh, it, it's you know it, it it's it's a tough it's a tough one to answer precisely. Uh, but I, you know, uh, with the numbers that we have currently going uh, in the city of Chicago, uh, we're 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 getting we're getting we're reaching the, the the required numbers. Are we are we should we have a party over this? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. But the but you have to understand is this: we need better gun control. We need to get these folks in Springfield. We need to get these folks in, 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 in the U.S. Senate to stop selling guns. We don't need M6, M, M, M8, M6s on the street. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're in the process of right now going through the, uh, the right to carry. And I believe this will happen. But along with that comes a responsibility. The problem is that we're getting, we're, we're, we're getting guns, illegal guns. Illegal machine guns. I mean, we, we don't need these 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 types of arms in the street uh, uh, right now. Where are they getting from? That is the source, and that's the source that we have to go after. I agree with you, Alderman. Good question. Um, the great thing about Can TV is that you can pick up your phone right now and engage in a conversation with an alderman whether he is your alderman or not. This is a great time to call and engage and ask the alderman questions. You can give us a call at 312-738-1060. So, um, of course, we go from guns, but I have a question regarding the budget. Everybody likes to talk about money, right? Of course. <laughs> so the budget for 2014. During the 2013 fiscal year budget, the city used funds from 2012 to offset 2013. 
Will this be the same for the fiscal year 2014? From what we understand, uh, as far as budget goes, uh, we will not have that opportunity to get some dollars from 2013 going into 14. So the answer is, is no on that right now. Okay. All right, we have a caller. Hi, caller. Hello, how you doing? Good. Thank you. Yes, I was a listener to the Hall of I want to express my thoughts about the, what he just said about the net, but not bringing the National Guard. Yes. Uh, it would be nice if, if, if we could get it under control. But it seems like every day somebody's child is dying on the streets. Yeah, you're right. And, and it's not one person's fault. It's everybody. And you got to look at your community. That's right. They're closing up the schools, closing up transportation, and the majority of the people who they came out of CHA housing development, they closed them down. They spread them all over the city. So now you got a group of people. Some of them just don't care. So what we need to do, we need to start working with our youth yes, and trying to make sure that we have programs and plays to intervene. I just want to bring it to your attention. I see you all the time at the city council meeting. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you. She's right. We have another caller. Yes, good evening. Uh, Alderman, I have a question concerning green technology. It seems like I know that Chicago is really trying to get to the forefront of green technology, and I'm just trying to see for people who are interested in what's going on that you know of in the city and specifically in your ward. Well, the Department of Housing and Economic Development has a green program uh, on, on housing, and uh, that's a start. That would be the first person we would call. Uh, but we, we welcome these ideas. Um, in fact, if you, if you have anything, any ideas you would like to sit down, you could sit down with me personally. Uh, but it's, we welcome that. We absolutely will. And there, there's, some, there's some tax incentives for folks that build with green technology. Um, and I welcome that. It's a very good uh, question. Alderman, do you have a website? I do. Okay. It's, uh, it's uh, ward30 at cityofchicago.org. Okay. Uh, any, any ideas, uh, any questions, please refer them to me. Email us. Email, Email. us. We, 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 uh, we watch that very closely, and uh, we take it very seriously, and we'll forward it to the right uh, organization. But it's it's uh, that last uh, the environment is is so so important. War thirty at city of Chi city of Chicago dot org for the aldermen ideas recommendations concerns questions you can contact them directly via email. Um, we have a couple of minutes to go, and I mm -hmm. know that you are the committee chairman of human relations for the city of Chicago. Can you tell the viewers what that actually is? I just became the, uh, thank the mayor, uh, mm -hmm. I just became a chairman of committee on human relations. It deals, it deals directly with racial issues, housing issues, uh, gender issues, uh, you know, um, anything that, that, that comes to my committee, uh, uh, we, we hear it and, and, and we, we take action. Uh, uh, but and and most of, mo, uh, a lot of these calls, a lot of the the initial calls will go to the uh, Commission on Human Relations. That is the Commissioner uh, Noriega, Mona Noriega, who hears those uh, issues that are ongoing. Um, if there's anyone that needs to talk about uh, any anything to do with human relations, please uh, bring it to my attention, and we will forward it to the right group. Okay, I always like to um, ask my aldermen or representatives that I interview some of their points of interest in their ward. So do you have any points of interest that people need to know about so they can come visit the 30th Ward well, and discover the, those the, great things? The gentleman just mentioned earlier green technology. We just opened up a park uh, at uh, Kilbourne Park, uh, uh, Green Gardens. Mm -hmm. uh, beautiful. You go, you go to Kilbourne Park in, in the green area, um, and you would think you're, you're at the Botanic Gardens. Uh, we're also in the process of, of rehabbing the greenhouse at, at Kilbourne Park. So I, I've got to say to everyone at Kilbourne Park, great job, and we're going to keep, keep it going there because I think it's very important that we learn about uh, our uh, eating properly. Okay. And that's where it starts. Well, 
Alderman, it's always a pleasure to um, serve as your host. Um, it's always a pleasure, 36 years servant for the city of Chicago, giving you access to him right here on Can TV. Um, we will be on next week again, same bat time, same bat channel. Would you like to say anything before we go off the air? I just want to thank you uh, for listening to uh, Can TV. It's very important. Political forum is very important. Uh, but don't forget, if you have any questions, do call us at 773-794-3095. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Alderman.